stop on the road to Damascus, grab a cup of coffee or a glass of water or some tea, whatever it is you're having today, we're going to get into the book of Acts. This is chapter 17, and this is Paul, and he is preaching uh, to the Jews and the Gentiles about who God is and that Jesus is going to return to judge um, believers and non-believers alike. And so um, I just want to go ahead and get into this. This is chapter 17, verse 16 through 31. And the reason that I wanted to uh, go over this particular passage is because Jesus' return is so close. Uh, those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, um, we know that Jesus is returning soon. Uh, we can we can feel it stirred up in our spirit uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. We see the signs that are happening all around the world to know that we're um, experiencing uh, more intense birth pangs, uh, as they're referred to in the scriptures. So this is so important to get this message out, especially for those that don't have a relationship with Jesus, that have not accepted Jesus or Yeshua, that's his name in Hebrew, the Christ, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, those that have not accepted his free gift of salvation to be reconciled back to our Heavenly Father, our Creator, the one that created everything, the heavens, the earth, us, everything in it. So just please listen closely. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of talking while I'm reading this because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so just, uh, you know, if you can find a quiet place and go ahead and, uh, and get comfortable. And um, let's listen to what Paul has to say. Now Paul waited for them at Athens. His spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers, and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers, I'm sorry, Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods, because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to Areopagus, saying, May we know that this new doctrine, what this new doctrine is of which you speak. For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Uh, for as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. And of course that's because we are his temple. His Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us and we become uh, the temple of God and our body is the temple. And Jesus, of course, is the temple. He was the temple that was raised up in three days after the physical temple was destroyed. Let's see. Uh, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives life to all, breath and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. So we are here in the right time. And uh, this, this kind of stands out to me because I have a bad habit of saying I was born in the wrong era. I feel like I should have been born where I would have been an adult, maybe back in the you know 50s. Um, but God has pre-appointed our times and our dwellings, so we are born in the right time, we are living in the right time, and we are dwelling in the right place. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Uh, so the boundary. Let's see. It's pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. 
so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. He is right there. Call out to the Lord. Uh, he is not far. He is not far at all. Um, for in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. And of course, that would be an idol, that would be like a statue, um, you know, made out of gold or silver or wood, that people actually make a god and bow down to and worship. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Turn from your wicked ways, turn from unbelief, and put your faith in Jesus Christ, the one true God, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way to be reconciled back to the Father. He is the only way of salvation, the only way to heaven. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, and that man is Jesus Christ. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And that's how we know he's talking about Jesus, for one, because he tells us that it's the man that he raised from the dead, and that is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, um, our Messiah, our Lord and Savior, the Christ. And um, secondly, there's other scriptures in the Bible, and I should have looked them up, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, where it talks about Jesus will be coming to judge and make war, and that's in the book of Revelation. I just don't know the number off the top of my head might be 1911 but don't quote me on that i could be wrong um but anyways this is so important because jesus is coming back very very soon our time is very short and even if you don't believe that jesus is returning soon you have no idea if you get to take another breath because we don't know how many days we have on this earth this earth is just temporary and we are all appointed to die. This physical body is going to die. And those of us that are in Jesus Christ, um, that have been born again by the power of His Holy Spirit, sealed to the day of redemption, we will only die once and then have eternal life uh, with God, with Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Those that are not in Christ Jesus, uh, those that have rejected him, they will not only die in the body, but also die in the spirit. And they will be cast into the lake of fire, just like the scriptures say. Um, there are some people that try to say, you know, don't preach on hell. Nobody wants to hear that. Or it's irrelevant. It is not irrelevant. There are some people that are saved by that message. And that message is true and it's in God's word. So please, don't wait. If you are in Christ Jesus, then I pray that the peace of God will fill you and that he will protect you and take care of you and that you go to his word and study every day and stand on his promises and in his strength because his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Um, we, we live and breathe and move through God himself. And those of you that are not in Christ Jesus, I just, please don't wait. God loves you. He loves me. He does not wish that any should perish. Please repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ before it's too late. I love you. God loves you. And uh, God willing, I will see you in a couple of days. Shalom. May the peace of our Lord be with you. Bye.